In this video today, I will share with you in what case you would use 1688, how to find a supplier, how does it differ from Alibaba, and why you would actually use that platform. I'm also going to teach you how you can find the best supplier on the platform, especially if you're looking for small order quantities. I've been living in China now since 2013, and before I had actually a sourcing agency here in Shenzhen, and we sourced more than a thousand products. Now, one of the platforms that all of my agents leverage the most is 1688. So if you're looking for a product for your Amazon FBA business, this might be the platform for you. Now, if you're new to this channel, my name is Niels, and at this channel here at Easy Peasy Ecom, we're talking all about sourcing, selling, and profiting from your products online. So if that's something you want to hear more about, absolutely consider subscribing. Just hit the button below and press that like button. Now, 1688 is actually a service owned by Alibaba. And so Alibaba is basically the platform where foreign companies would go and buy products from China. 1688 is a company that... Chinese people go. It's actually, when you, when you pronounce this in Chinese, it sounds very similar to Alibaba. It's Yao Leo Baba, Yao Leo Baba, Alibaba. So it's very close to each other. And that's actually how you can see already that those are related. When I share my screen with you, we'll actually see a big advantage because they are related, because Alibaba actually verifies lots of the suppliers on 1688. So let's go in. We're going to find out now how easy it is to use the platform for real alternatives to Alibaba suppliers. And in the end, I will give you my verdict if you should use the platform in your situation or if you should rather use something else. So why would you go to 1688 and not to Alibaba? There are two reasons. One of the reasons is that on 1688, you usually get a lot smaller quantities than you can get on Alibaba. And also, it's a very good trick to validate the price. So if your supplier on Alibaba gives you a price and you find the supplier on 1688 and you ask them there for a quotation and the price is different, then now you can go back to them and say, hey, hey look, uh, the price that you're offering on this platform is different than the price you're offering me here. So then you kind of can use that when you negotiate and create leverage in your negotiations about price. Also, it's just an additional resource that you can use. So let me share my screen with you and show you how you can get around the platform, find a supplier and get a good price. So very first, when you look at it, you see that everything's in Chinese, right? So very first in this video, I'm going to show you now how to change that, how to translate the page. Then I'm going to show you how you can find the right keywords to type in here. And then I'm going to show you uh, how to find a supplier. And very last, I'll show you how to buy on the platform. So let's dive into this. At very first, um, I'm using Google Chrome and that makes it really, really easy to translate everything. So what you want to do, you just can right click on it and um, translate it basically. So if you don't right click on an image, you just click here somewhere and you say translate in English and it will translate it. Um, then for the keywords that you're looking for, so we're, we're going to buy bikinis today, okay? So let's say um, you have a few options here to look for bikinis. Here is a search bar. It works like on Alibaba and anywhere else, really. You have the option to um, just use a picture from your uh, computer. And uh, that's useful when, for example, you have a competitor or you want to compete with someone and you want to find their supplier. You can get their pictures in here if they look like they didn't make custom images but just got them from the supplier. You just put them in here. And uh, sometimes you can actually find their supplier directly through this because they're using the same image. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't really recommend you, to be honest, to use this function because uh, it's pretty bad. So you upload a picture as a, as a sample and it shows you a couple of other things. Then another option that you can have is to type in the English word. And this has advantages and disadvantages. The advantage is that uh, people or the, the shops that actually offer or that actually show up for the English keywords, they optimize their listings for it. And that means that usually they're also going um, to work with people or wanting to work with people who come from abroad. Keep, always keep in mind that this is a local page. This is not like Alibaba. Usually most of the people here don't expect you as a foreigner 
to work with them. So the next thing that uh, is actually the very best option is to translate your keyword into Chinese. So we're just using Google Translate. And if we type in the bikini, uh, we're going to have the the, the Chinese words for it. And make sure that you choose, that you choose Chinese simplified and not Chinese traditional. Chinese traditional is uh, more for the Cantonese and, um, basically Cantonese spoken in Hong Kong and in Guangdong province. But we're going to be looking for, um, Mandarin. Okay. And that's Chinese simplified. Then you're just going to copy this keyword. And I'm going to show you real quick. You just add it in here. Once you have the keyword, you press search and we're going to have a few options. Next, once this loads, I'm going to show you how to find your supplier in here. So now that you got the keyword, um, obviously it was the right keyword because you see a lot of suppliers here offering um, things with bikinis. One thing that you really want to pay attention for are a few criteria. So we're going to filter these and we're going to use some of these criteria here. And uh, to make this easier to understand, I'm going to translate the page real quick. It just takes, it takes a second. And once that's translated, then we can go ahead. So you see here are uh, a few things that you can take and a few things that you can do. Okay. One of the things is the area. So if you know already you have another supplier in a, in a certain area or you have areas you want to work with that are um, you know, where the area is known for, for example, Shenzhen, if you're looking for electronics, you would hit Shenzhen. Or if you just want to look for a province that's really close to the sea to, to lower your shipping costs, um, you could use that, but usually you don't really need to do that. The one most important thing that you have to tick is this one. It says strength. And what this does basically is Alibaba validates those suppliers. So strength business means that Alibaba already validated that this supplier is legit, that the supplier usually, um, you know, supplies good quality. They've, uh, inspected the company and they have the history from, uh, Alibaba. So, the, so here the strength business is not like something like gold supplier that you can purchase at, at, uh, Alibaba to show you. This is something that uh, you have to earn. Okay. So, um, based on your history, Alibaba is validating these and only if you're, you're a strength business, you can use that. One of the things that I saw when I just started out would be very helpful is to look uh, for suppliers. So if you head over business and you have production and you have wholesale and agent business and all of these kind of things, the problem with that is that this is a feature that the suppliers here on, on 1688 can actually uh, just, just choose. So they don't have to be validated for that. Most of the time, this is incorrect. So you don't even need to, to take care of that. Like I said, the very, very most important thing is that they have the strength business. You can do the turnover or you can fill the bar by a turnover. Um, but also I personally think it's not really, 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 really necessary. <laughs> okay. So with that set, we can actually look and uh, see if we find any bikinis we like just from the design, just from the prices. And now when we're talking about the prices, how do you know 22 yuan, how much is that? So you basically just go over to Google and you type an RMB to USD. And then you get this form here right on the Google page. So we can have a look how much actually 22 uh, Chinese yuan or RMB going to be. And then we see it's $3.80. So it's always changing really. So the exchange rate uh, isn't constant. And this can also be a good uh, trick to save some money when you buy in China. Um, because you can just, just buy at times where the ratio is very beneficial for you. And um, then you can actually save some money at the order. Or vice versa, if the exchange rate is not beneficial for you, then you actually have to pay more for your order Um then you may be, you know, may have paid for your last one. So let me go into the next step. And now let's look, uh, how do you identify um, if the supplier is reliable, if this is someone you would like to work with. So let's head over to one of those listings and then we go further on that. After opening the listing and translating, the one thing you want to look at is, or the very first thing you want to look at 
is where are they located. So if you just go down here and you copy their location and you paste it into Google Maps, you will see that they're located here at the very point at the sea. And this is really, really good if they're located at sea because that means they don't have to ship your products halfway through the country before it lands at the sea before they can ship it. So that actually um, gets you a better price for shipping. Next thing you want to look at is the company profile. So you had over here it says company file because now you want to find out a little bit more about the supplier. It's not really about the product at all. So of course this they have the product you want, right? But you really want to see who is the supplier you're working for? Who are you or you're working with? Who are you actually going to be working with? Where are they located? Which we checked already. Then we want to know who are they and want to see if they're legit, if they're manufacturer or not. We also want to find the contact details. So here again, we're going to be translating the page uh, once it loads. And then we're going to have a look at a few of these things here. And one of the things is sometimes the, the company profiles on um, Alibaba look really, really good. And usually that means it tr it's a trading agency. On 1688, it's a little bit different. So even the factories uh, sometimes don't look too bad. Uh, so what we want to be looking at here is when were they established and uh, that was a couple of years ago, which is, which is, which is good and th that's all certified and that's very important. Okay. Then where are they registered? And if they're registered in Hong Kong, for example, and they're, they're somewhere located in whatever, you know, skyscraper somewhere in, in 50th floor, um, that means they're not going to be a factory, right? Because they're not producing somewhere up in a skyscraper. And uh, here you can see the um, factory address. You can see this looks already like a like a production area, and it's very close to the sea. Now, what do they do? They do swimwear processing and sales. Um, this is what we want, right? And all of the things are satisfied. Then we have a few of these things here that you can look at, which um, deep inspection means that someone has been there and validated that they uh, do a good job with um, production that they actually are producing. And basically, this is all validated. So you have the quality insurance, um, which means that um, and the deliver guarantee and all of these things, which are really imp important. The buyer guarantee actually means that they are, um, they basically paid a deposit to 1688. And if they don't deliver your products in time, then, um, they will lose their deposit. Okay. So it's a really important thing. So you're just, uh, looking at them and actually they don't look too bad, to be honest. Um, you can check back to the products and have a look what kind of products you like. Make a note of the links. So when you go through and find different suppliers, then you actually remember what supplier offered which products. So if you go through their products, you can kind of see what they liked, save the links, and then um, contact them. So that's the next step. Let's have a look how you would actually contact those suppliers. Now that you basically found what you like and you uh, save the links of the products that they offer that you like to have, you click up here on contact information. Oftentimes they have an email address here and you can actually uh, contact them yourself. The one thing, uh, especially on 1688 is that I recommend you to not contact them yourself, to not purchase yourself. It can get very, very complicated if you don't understand the language. It can be complicated because uh, the supplier might not even speak English. So it's, it's a little bit of a tricky situation here. You, the one thing that you can do is get the right sourcing agent. So if you find a sourcing agent that's a freelancer, they can do all of this for you, okay? So they will get a better deal with the supplier. But what you can do is basically you send them the contact information. You send the sourcing agent the links that you got from uh, from from the supplier uh, of the products you like, and then you send it to your agent and then your agent can contact them. You see, you have a mobile number here. If you call them, that's not really going to work out because even though if they can type English, usually they're not very good at talking English. Um, so this is the thing your sourcing agent can just call them, talk to them in Chinese, find out a little bit more who they are, get you real quotations for, uh, the products you are after. And uh, it makes your life so much, so much easier if you can get an agent to contact. The next way here 
is uh, to chat with them. There's a little chat form here uh, that you can use, but also this is a program that you have to download first, and this also doesn't come in very, very simple. Um, so my really biggest takeaway from this video is you can absolutely find uh, cool products here. You can find suppliers to work with. You can pre-validate them a little bit. And then once you have the contact, sometimes they have an email address and you can go with them. Uh, sometimes they have uh, the the link here directly to Alibaba, right? Uh, or you can look for them and uh, see if you can find this one on Alibaba and use the contact forms they have there. If not really the one thing that I I, I can only always recommend is get a sourcing agent so that the agent can source the product for you. And uh, that's really the trick here. The next thing that I want to mention is once you contacted them, once you make a deal, is the paying situation, right? And also for the paying situation, even if you can contact them through this platform, it's really hard to pay because usually they don't accept PayPal and you should never send them just a bank transfer. So how do you pay them, right? There's a whole other situation about that. And for very beginners, again, I, I absolutely like this platform to look for um, to, 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 to get an impression about the actual prices in the market, to find a little bit more, uh, of good suppliers, to find, uh, cool products to look at. But then I always give the information to someone who actually knows what they're doing, uh, to a Chinese person that you can find on, on, on freelancer.com or, um, upwork.com or other pages like that. You can find a, a sourcing agent. They will be able to get you a better price and you just pay them a commission on your total order volume. So usually you use them. They do all the work for you, yet you save money overall. So that's the way to go. Or again, search up the shop on um, Alibaba and see if you can contact them. So what do you think? Leave me a comment below if you would consider using 1688 or if you rather prefer Alibaba. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm really interested to hear. Also, if you haven't yet joined my free web class where you can learn how to source your private label product in China without getting screwed by Alibaba suppliers, make sure to follow the link in the description box below and get there. It's free.